are 40 lawyers in Brazil working, especially uh, we are created, we were created in uh, 2007, more than 10 years. Uh, we are uh, a company that is very uh, internationalized company because we have a uh, Canadian desk, the Jersey here is from Canada. We have a uh, US taxation expertise because I studied in the United States. And we have a German law, German desk in, Brazil, in, in our firm. Lucas Homberg is an uh, Austrian guy, right? so we have a close relationship with Germany. We have many clients from that. And of course, we have a lot of language uh, speaking in our <laughs> law firm because it's, it's, uh, it's our day by day. Uh, in terms of field of uh, uh, practicing, we work, of course, with corporate law and agreements and contracts, uh, both advisory and litigation. Taxation, of course, it's a very important issue for us. Uh, we have our background is in taxation, field is also in taxation, uh, so it's very important. And in Brazil, if you want to go to be in Brazil, you need to, to know about the labor law. So that's why we have a strong uh, presence in this area in our office. Okay. Uh, saying this, just to go our uh, little background of, of my background is my first degree is in economy. After that, uh, uh, law. After that, is international taxation. And uh, the word is not correct. Yes, uh, first. Uh, Business law in uh, Harvard, extension school. After that, uh, the master degree in international taxation in the of Florida. And uh, in Leiden, Netherlands, I got the specialist in corporate international tax. And so, Philip now can, get, can, can give his background. Okay. Well, I'm tax lawyers, uh, member of the, the Quebec Bar Association. Um, Working in Brazil for, for 18 years now, so uh, I think my perspective, uh, I can introduce this a, a little bit when we'll be discussing because I, I really think for me it makes a lot of sense to invest in Brazil, but uh, we can confirm and discuss a lot of this. Uh, so working with a lot of Canadian companies, investing obviously in Brazil, and also with a lot of Brazilian companies, startup companies, investing in Canada. Uh, in, in <coughs> I want to introduce you to other, our other panelists. We have Enrique Martin, CFO at Angels Nest Mexico. Claudio Rojas, Director at Bird Capital. Tony Duckett, Managing Director at Sci Ventures Fund. And Uzan Isnak, I apologize if I didn't pronounce it. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> President of Kairatsu Forum Canada. And Philip is going to be our moderator. So, Thank you. Don't need to see my picture the entire day. <laughs> to this slide. Okay. Uh, so it was very interesting today, and I think like many pilots started to discuss a little bit like this morning. It was very interesting to hear about his view of uh, what would we need to invest in Latin America, what, it, what he's looking for. I, I think like when we, we start discussing with different participants here, there's some sort of the same message that goes around a, a little bit. Um, the market is very interesting. I think there's no doubt about this, but obviously to invest in startup company, you need to be able to manage risk. And since we realize all of this, like talking about Enrique a little bit earlier, there are still quite a lot of myth going out uh, about, about Latin America. And the main question is that, what can we do? Or what do we need to bring to the table to build bridges uh, between foreign investors in Latin America? And obviously, if I, I'll give you an example. Uh, and I won't take the introduction too long because you're not here to listen to what, I, what, what I'm going to say, but I don't want the participants and the panel wants to say. But if I, if I can give you the example of, of Canada in Brazil, uh, what they have been doing uh, in, in either side, either from the startup world and also from, let's say, like major, like company type of stuff. Canada has been uh, very active to promote uh, the country as the right place to invest uh, for startup company 
to, to, to start operating in Brazil, and obviously it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Brazilian startup that wants to internationalize their business, obviously they can receive quite a lot of credibility if they come first to Canada, start operating in Canada, and then from Canada starting to, uh, to invest. But what I realized, and this is like my, my, my 10 cents uh, analysis on, on the subject, I think the key message here is we need to talk. We need to discuss about Latin America to try to uh, talk about the Smith. Uh, a lot of people like we were talking, <coughs> Claudio here, like obviously I, I, need to, I need to control my risk, I need to administer my risk, and I want to protect the capital that I'm investing. Uh, and, and often wise, it's just a lack of information. Because if you ask me the question, is that safe to invest capital in Brazil? I would say yes. Are there risks, like, like political risk, and, and so on, the answer is yes. But at the same time, when I talk with, with clients, with, with startup and, and so on, when, when I told them, look at the size of the market in Brazil, so it's kind of like risk analysis versus the opportunities in, in, in the market. So one, one thing that also, and I think this is clear for a lot of people, what will be key to invest in Latin America will be to partner, so will be a, a type of co-investing model. And this is something that Manu Bada mentioned also. So I would like to start maybe the discussion today with, with the members of, of the panel. I, I would like to understand a little bit what, what do you need in order first to consider uh, co-investment with other businesses, and secondly, what kind of conditions you are looking for to enter like, an emerging market like in Latin America? I don't know who would like to be the first to maybe start a discussion. This is very informal like, uh, for the next 30 minutes. Well, I'll Go start with mm -hmm. just uh, slightly on, on topic, but uh, just with a bit of a story, just to, to get into the theme of investing in Latin America and how that the, the, the feeling is in, in uh, Canada towards that. I went to see, I'll tell a little story. And my wife were here, she goes, oh God, no. But, uh, <laughs> um, I went to You're being meet, recorded. Yeah, oops, <laughs> erase that part. Um, I went to see the, a guy who runs a big fund here locally, a $100 million fund with big institutional investors. Because our, our fund is seed, and we're always looking for partners who we can bring our investments to to, to get up the uh, the stairway of investment. So we, we were chatting and I said, so, oh yeah, by the way, would you be interested in, in some startups from, say, Latin America? Because, you know, I've got a lot of links down there and I bumped into a lot of really interesting companies. And he said, why would I want to do that? Um, he said, I, you know, lots of good companies here in, in, in Ontario and I, you know, struggle in terms of being able to, to stay on top of them and, and, and interact with them. So. I kind of, for people that have invested in uh, looking at the panel here in uh, startups overseas, uh, how do you get past that kind of, uh, you know, that uh, that sense that these these uh, that people have here locally? That uh, how do we overcome that kind of thing? Because I think there's a lot of tremendous opportunities, as you say. But how do you get past sort of the Canadian apprehension of, of taking that additional risk? So that's kind of how I would launch the, uh, the discussion. Well, so add to that story, it's very naive, and we tell the investors, local investors here in Canada, it is incredibly naive to think that the best companies on the planet actually are in your backyard, because they're not. Uh, either you go through a fund, or you go through something, but it is education, and it is uh, uh, relationships. Just to push back on that, the U.S. is essentially our backyard, right? Yeah, well, I'd be amazed. You're right. You would be amazed on how how few right, angels actually go into uh, the U.S. I think it was the garage. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. So I'll run with that. Um, I would say, you know, when you have a tremendous amount of deal flow opportunity in North America, um, where if Canadian-based uh, venture capital firm or angel investor, I presume, um, you you understand the legal regime, and so you touched on this. Uh, it, it doesn't you don't need dedicated resources to understand what the legal risk is or your political risk for that matter. Uh, so I would say in in all cases, what you need is some kind of localized presence that you can rely on, and that's where partnerships come in. Yeah, I will elaborate on that. I think that relationships are the way to go. It's 
I think that it's impossible for a Canadian investor, name it an angel investor or VC, or for a Mexican or Colombian investor to go to another country by itself. I think that will be like a challenge for him trying to understand the other country, the entrepreneur, the culture of that country, because not all Latin America is the same. We are very different in this space because it's a huge market. So it will be impossible for an investor to go alone. So we need to have these relationships with the local investors um, that are co-investing with us in order to go to another country. I think that's the only way to go. Because you will not be able to, to do everything by yourself. It will not make sense to make that effort to analyze your investment opportunity. And maybe saying, OK, I spent three months uh, a lot of trips, a lot of conferences, and finally saying, no, thank you, because the project is not that good, as I, think of, as, as I thought at the beginning. Um, all that money, when you do it in your backyard, it's practically zero. So uh, I think that you need the local partner in order also to, to make that part of the due diligence, not all the due diligence, but some part of it, a big part of it also will be done in the, by the local investors. Oh, then I'd be interested, um, your investment in the U.S., were there other co-investors, I presume? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're always co-investing. Right. Uh, that's every deal. So it's, uh, it's, it's a given. And it's not just the U.S., it's Asia, it's uh, Europe. Except for Latin America, <laughs> it's not like it's not. It's not exactly what it is. I have no idea why that is. Well, that's interesting. Why? Why not? Like, are you, are you looking? Are you thinking about of this? Of course, or? of course. We put money into Indian companies, into you know. But, Indian but specifically, companies. like Latin America. We just didn't have the right relationships over there to really kind of. It is. It's so based on relationships, and if you go it alone, you're. You're gonna waste all this money. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get zero out of it. And if you don't have those real good relationships, that will kind of hold you by the hand and lead you to the deals. 